In this Photoshop tutorial, let's do some HDR focus stacking and turn this RAW file into this final image. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find all the RAW files I'm using here by clicking on the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Here we are in the camera RAW editor. Down here you can see all the HDR images opened up and the first thing we need to do is to merge them. If you don't know how this works, I will go through this process real quick. So for each HDR sequence, I shot three different images. This one being for the shadows, this as the middle exposure and this as an exposure to recover the highlights. What we want to do with these three is to select them all, holding now the shift key and clicking on them, then right click, merge to HDR. And without changing anything in this window, just hit the merge button. At this point, you might lose the overview over all the files down here. So I would suggest to properly organize this. What I'm doing here is to select my emerged HDR image, right click on it and set the label to a specific color. Let's go with red for this one. Since we want to use focus stacking, we need to merge different HDR files with different focus points. That means we want to continue going through all the HDR files right here. I'm going to select the next three again, right click and choose merge to HDR. Again, just hit the merge button. And again, we want to set the label of the new HDR file to red. So we have all the files properly organized and we continue this with all the remaining files. Once we have merged all the images, we only want to work on the HDR files. So we're going to click on this filter icon, choose color label and choose red. And these are the five HDR files on which we want to apply our raw adjustments. At this point, let me show you why we are using focus stacking for this image. This one is pretty much the base image. We do have a sharp image right back here, but since we have an object very close to the lens, you can see right here, this area is out of focus. So to change that, I took several images, each with different focal points, with the focus shifting closer and closer to the lens. Until we get something that looks sharp in the foreground, but the image in the distance is out of focus in this case. We are going to use Photoshop later to combine them all to get an ultra sharp image. But before that, we need to do the raw adjustments, of course. So let's work on this file. And here you will see why I shot this as an HDR. We do have some harsh highlights against some very deep, dark shadows. So first off, let's change the profile going to Adobe Landscape because I want to bring up the base saturation and Landscape also helps bring up the details in the darkest parts a little bit. Then let's go through the basic panel. I want to adjust the white balance, bringing the temperature slightly down just to get a more natural base image. And I also want to bring up the tint to get rid of that heavy green color cast. Next up, let's work on the exposure. I want to start by bringing down the highlights to a point where we actually can see the blue of the sky. So right about here looks pretty good. And then I want to bring up the shadows to reveal details from the darker areas. For the same purpose, I can also bring up the blacks. And since we shot this as an HDR image, we have so much more information to work with, safely restoring all the details we need. So that is looking pretty good so far. I want to bring up the texture. And at the same time, I want to bring down the clarity, giving the whole image a very soft look. For the same effect, I'm going to slightly bring down the dehaze. This will also make the image a little brighter, so be careful here. And of course, we want to raise the vibrance and I might even want to raise the saturation just a notch. So that looks pretty good. We went from our raw file like this to this image with just a bunch of base adjustments. However, we can improve this even further by using some masking. So let's go into the masking panel. There's actually not much going on. First off, I want to work on this area in the foreground, which is rather dark. In this case, we can use a simple linear gradient, just covering the foreground like this. And what I want to do here is to further bring up the shadows 
And I also want to bring up the highlights, which will add some very nice contrast in here. For the same effect, we can bring up the contrast itself. Just be careful since the darker areas will get darker again by doing this. And I also want to bring in clarity in this specific area. That looks great. Now I want to make the general image brighter without affecting the highlights. So how am I doing that? I'm going to create a luminance range mask. And with the luminance range mask active, I'm going to click somewhere here in the bright area. This will select the highlights of the image. I'm going to adjust the luminance range some more by dragging around this pin right here, further filtering out the midtones this way. And I'm going to make it softer by bringing up this point. Right now, we only have the highlights selected. However, I want to have everything but the highlights selected. So I'm just going to hit that invert button. And that's the perfect mask for our purpose. So to make everything brighter, I'm going to very carefully bring up the exposure. I am also going to bring up the whites. And at this point, I might further introduce some saturation. And that's it. Next up, let's do a little bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer. Let's work with the hue first. And what I want to do is to bring down the orange hue very slightly. This will mainly affect the colors right here in those leaves on the ground, making them a little more reddish. And I also want to bring down the yellow hue making those leaves on the tree a little more orange. And I'm going to bring up the green hue to make the green leaves look a little fresher. Perfect. Now let's skip over to the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up orange. I'm also going to bring up the yellow tones and the green tones. We want this image to be vibrant, just like that. We could even bring up the blue tones in this case, making the sky a little more saturated as well. And then let's head over to the luminance tab. Here we can further bring in some more contrast to this image. I'm going to bring up the orange luminance. I'm also bringing up the yellow luminance. And all these adjustments will just make those leaves a little bit brighter. Let's also turn up the greens. Wonderful, and that's it. I'm not going to touch the split toning since I quite like how the colors look for this image. So next up, let's add a little bit of vignetting in the effects tab. So I'm just going to bring down the vignetting slider. Not too much, just a subtle effect right here. And we can also head into the calibration tab to bring down the blue primary hue. Just a tiny bit. This always works great on these autumn images. And let's again pump up the saturation. Wonderful. That looks great. Now, I don't think I want to apply any sharpening because this might be a bit too much for this image because we have a lot of detail everywhere. So we're pretty much done with the raw adjustments. All we need to do is to synchronize all the settings we apply to our base image to all the other images. So with the base image selected, hold down the shift key, click on the last image in the sequence, right click, choose synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. Perfect. With all the images still selected, just hit open objects. And here we are in Photoshop. So we now need to stack those images together. I'm going through the images one by one. Hit Ctrl A to select the whole image, hit Ctrl C to copy it. I'm closing this one. Then go to the base image, hit Ctrl V to insert the previous image and continue this for all the remaining images of the sequence. All right, here we have all the images. They are, however, not perfectly aligned since I was close to the ground and shooting this handheld. So we need to fix that. To do this, we are going to select all the layers. Then we go to the Edit menu and choose Auto Align Layers. We don't need to change anything here, just hit OK. That looks perfect. And with the layers still selected, again, go to the edit menu and now comes the focus stacking part. For that, we want to use auto blend layers. Again, we don't need to change anything. Just hit OK. And here we have the focus stacked image. 
Now taking a closer look you can see everything is sharp from the foreground to the background and that's exactly the effect we were aiming for. So from this point on we can continue working on this image and do some final adjustments in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do, I actually want to clean up the layers palette right here. I'm going to just select them all and merge them by hitting Ctrl E. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. And I want to clean up the shot using the remove tool and just get rid of a few branches here and there to make it look cleaner. All right, this looks much cleaner compared to before. Now let's also do a little bit of dodging. What I want to do is to make the highlights in the foreground brighter. So to do that, let's create a new layer and let's switch the blending mode to overlay and to specifically target the highlights of an image, we can hit the shortcut Control Alt 2, which will select all the highlights we need. With the selection active and the layer selected, hit the layer mask icon and this will create a luminosity mask. Now, what we can do here is grab the brush by pressing B and make sure the brush opacity is around 10%. Then set the foreground color to white. Actually, let's bring up the brush opacity here to 30% and with the brush setup, I'm going to paint in some more brightness on few specific parts in the foreground, mainly on those mossy tree branches, just painting in some light in the scene. All right, this looks really, really good. I can turn off this layer so you can see the difference from before to after makes everything much more interesting. Now let's also add a little bit of glow. So again, new layer. This time we want to switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, again, use the brush tool and set the foreground color to something warmer. We want to have a slight yellow tint in here. Bring up the saturation a bit. Okay. And this time, however, we want the brush opacity to be around 10% to not make this effect too strong. And now I'm just painting in, in this very bright area. Very, very careful here with different brush sizes. Just a little bit of subtle glow. Perfect, that's it. And I guess at this point, here we have the finished image. So I hope this HDR focus stacking tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.